The Roborock S7 Max V is an amazing robot vacuum for cleaning your house. But what's crazy is that the dock, which is basically another robot, cleans and maintains the other robot in your house. This is just crazy. I've been running strenuous, very scientific, real world tests using my two sweet little monsters. So let's see if it can handle their destructiveness. This is the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra version. Ultra stands for the dock because you can buy this as a standalone robot vacuum or with just the dock that's the self-emptying bin. But let me tell you, the Ultra dock is amazing. I'm obsessed with this dock. And I know that might sound a little weird to say that about a robot vacuum dock, but this robot vacuum and dock are just jam packed full of features. It's basically like the Tesla of robot vacuums. And I know that might sound cliche, but hear me out. Camera and sensors on the outside for autopilot, check. Collision avoidance assist, scheduled charging for off-peak power pricing, check, check, and check. But here's something Teslas cannot do. Automatically connect to the chargers and wash themselves. But this robot vacuum can, even though that would be pretty cool if Teslas could just drive themselves to the car wash without you in them and come back clean. Even though this robot vacuum is jam packed with features, just like the Tesla, it has a few things it claims it does really well, but it might not be fully there just yet. I'll get to that in a minute. Roborock did send this to me for a review, but no money was exchanged and I'm able to share my honest opinion. Okay, enough talk. Let's see this thing in action. What better way to test this vacuum than to just give my kids a snack? Let them eat a few of their favorite foods and see where the chips fall. Well, yep, that looks about like the standard aftermath of one of our kids eating a snack. The new S7 Max V has double the suction power of the previous S6 Max V, and that's using the Max Plus option because the other modes are probably pretty similar. But the Max Plus mode is surprisingly not too loud. That's what I have selected now, and it normally cleans in straight lines, but as you can see, it's kind of going all over the place. That's because it thinks the Cheerios are pet waste. Finally, the vacuum decided not to be such a picky eater when it realized it wasn't pet waste and did a really good job cleaning up everything. Underneath the vacuum, it doesn't have the standard brush you might be used to. It's rubber now and it seems to work really well, especially to not get hairs stuck on it compared to the bristles. When it comes to mopping, I decided to give my daughter a popsicle and just let her do her thing. She didn't disappoint. The mop on this robot vacuum is very good, but when it tried to clean up the leftover popsicle, it didn't get it all. It got most of it, but did move some of it to the grout in the tile. Now I normally wouldn't leave a huge puddle of popsicle for the mop to clean up. I'm not that lazy. I would ask Luna to clean it up first, then have the robot vacuum finish up. Just like the S7, the mop uses sonic vibration to scrub the floor. It does a way better job at cleaning than the previous robot vacuums that just basically dragged a wet cloth behind it. Also like the S7, the mop can lift up when it's going over carpet. If you have low profile carpet like us, it will work great, but if your carpet is longer, it might still rub against the mop, so keep that in mind. I love this feature because I don't have to program which areas to mop or vacuum. I can just tell it to go clean and it does it all for me. It's awesome. But that's not the best part of the mop. The new dock actually scrubs the mop clean so you don't have to do that anymore. The vacuum just backs up into the dock and it takes about three minutes to clean. There's a lot of weird gurgling noises during this process. And that's because all of that dirty water from it being cleaned is being sucked into the dirty water container. There's also a clean water container and that's used to clean the mop and refill the mop tank in the vacuum. And because of that, the robot vacuum can mop a little over 3,200 square feet before you need to empty and refill these water tanks. The tile area in my house is around 1,500 square feet, so I could mop my entire house twice without needing to interact with it at all. And that's insane, because before, I would have to stop it and clean the mop or refill the tank and basically babysit it for about two hours, and that would be only cleaning my house once. What's cool is that there's some floating sensors in both tanks and it will let you know if the clean water tank gets too low or if the dirty water gets too full. 
The dock light also turns red for this, or if the water tank wasn't set correctly. This dock can also self-empty the dustbin. It's really loud. And empties the dustbin in a disposable bag. You're supposed to get about two months worth of cleanings before needing to throw away the bag. They also give you another bag in the box. But I'm not a huge fan of the bag. I wish they had a reusable container for this. That way I don't have to remember to buy more replaceable bags. The bag does have a good design to close the opening when taking it out so dust doesn't go everywhere. The dock also charges the vacuum 30% faster, and I actually noticed it being faster, which is really convenient if the robot vacuum is cleaning up really big area and it can't finish it in one charge. It will return to the dock and top up to about 80% to finish the job. If you're like me and wondering how it charges with this dock, well, there's actually two ways this vacuum can charge underneath with the normal dock, and on the front with a bigger dock that's used for fast charging. I really like this dock, and I think it's worth it if you're gonna get the S7 Max V. But this vacuum also has tons of really cool tech in it as well. So it looks similar to the S6 Max V with the cameras in front, but it's slightly different. Instead of two cameras, it has one camera and one 3D structured light sensor. There's also an LED light in front to help it see better in the dark. One of my biggest issues with the S6 Max V was being able to recognize objects with the lights off only using night vision. So this LED light makes a big difference. There's also LiDAR on top to map out the floor plan so it cleans efficiently and can avoid certain areas. Before I set up any no-go zones in the map, I was curious if it would get stuck in the normal places around our house. And just like clockwork, it did. I thought about getting up and helping it while it struggled to get back on track but apparently I'm a sick person and just wanted to watch it struggle to get free. It actually had some good moves to help it swing around and finally get free. Then it must have completely forgotten the last few minutes because it did it again. So I just blocked off that area and now it's not a problem. You can actually use a 3D map and it's really cool. There's also an option to place furniture on the map and use that for where to clean. When it comes to avoiding objects, Roborock was making it sound way better than the previous version. And I do think it's better with the new sensor, especially identifying objects, but it still gets too close to some of those and will get stuck. Mainly from the big side brush sticking out. So the good news is the hardware and AI are really good at identifying objects, but they're gonna need to update the firmware to keep a safer distance from things like shoelaces or cords that can get caught in that side brush. I wouldn't say this is a reason to not buy this robot vacuum. It's still way better to have it than not, especially if your pet leaves a present on the ground, this thing is not gonna smear it on the carpet. You can also set when the vacuum can charge during the day if you have peak pricing with your power company. I think that's a great feature to help save money. It can also do video calls, probably to talk to your pet. Hey, Luna. But I'm not sure how much Luna likes this feature. You can also remote control the robot from the app and it was very responsive. Plus you can use a camera while doing this too. I use this feature all the time on the S6 Max V. Like if we're on vacation and we need to go check on something in the house, I'll drive the robot vacuum over using the camera and take a look. It's really handy. I can also use my voice to have it just clean the kitchen. Start cleaning in the kitchen. If I went over all the features, this video would be like an hour long. Pretty much anything I can think of or want to find in the settings, it's there. In my opinion, this is the best robot vacuum ever made, especially with the Ultra Dock for the mop. All those nice features come with a price tag of $1,400. Depending on your house layout and how much time you spend mopping will be factors and if that price tag is worth it. I think for a house like ours with a lot of tile, it makes sense. But either way, the fact that robots in our house are getting this advanced and that they're working together for a better experience, it's very exciting. Thanks for watching. Oh, it's fine, five second rule. But it's been longer than that. Oh, these floors are super clean now. It can be way longer than that. Two hours later. We're having a picnic because the floors are so clean. Oh no, your mom's gonna kill me. <laughs>